imagery is critically important to almost every genre of writing. We often mistakenly think it should be reserved for personal essays or fiction writing, but bringing a little tiny bit of narrative or storytelling into our writing, even when it's argument writing, can bring it to life, can connect us to our reader, and can show our reader something personal that cold hard facts just can't accomplish. Today's move is seen as evidence. Let's take a look at Tara Westover using a scene as evidence in her op-ed for the New York Times. I feel tired. There's the siren screech of an alarm sounding at 3.40 in the morning. I feel it in my teeth. Then images, the orange glow of the jumbo numbers in pitch black, the instinctual semi-conscious tapping of the button, the gradual shrinking of my bed as I climb out of it and move toward the door. I do not change my clothes. Let's take a look at what we can notice here. The first thing I notice is the length of this scene. It is so short, just a handful of sentences. And what this does is it allows Tara Westover to pull us into this story, to start to watch this movie unfolding in front of our eyes, but it doesn't make her stray too far from her main point because she's gonna give us this scene in just a very few sentences. I also noticed the incredible level of concrete details and specificity. The alarm sounding at 3.40 in the morning, the orange glow of the jumbo numbers in pitch black. She's not glossing over the details, even in this tiny space, but she's giving us very, very specific details. The exact time on the clock and the color and the size and the degree of the darkness in the room. I also notice a hallmark of showing and not telling, which is lots of sensory detail. We get the sense of touch and, and physical feeling with, I feel tired, I feel it in my teeth, the instinctual semi-conscious tapping of the button, the shrinking of the bed. We get all of those images um, that she tells us about in the room as she's opening her eyes and looking around. We get the sense of sound with the siren screech of the alarm. And we also get the specificity of her movement in the story, her feeling of tiredness, her opening of her eyes, her getting up out of the bed and not bothering to change her clothes. So in this editorial, she's talking about American exhaustion and how she too experiences it. She's not exactly the picture perfect American dream that people would paint her to be after reading her memoir, Educated. Now she could have used facts and data and stats about how many hours of sleep Americans get or how many hours of work they put into an average day. She could have quoted a researcher on exhaustion and she does many of those things at other places in this op-ed. But at this moment, she wanted the reader to see this movie playing in front of their eyes as they read to bring them into a greater sense of communion with her idea. This is much more engaging. We love stories. We're built to love stories. Our minds are created that way. And so by specifically using a scene, a tiny micro scene to say, I'm really tired, the reader can better see her point, can better feel her point and understand her point, and is also more likely to remember that argument that she's trying to make. Let's look at other writers who are using scene as evidence in their pieces. have you exhausted facts and stats and expert testimony and you could use a little bit more humanity maybe even a little bit more playfulness by including a tiny micro scene where would you like your readers to feel what you are feeling and bring them into closer communion with you and your ideas where in particular in your argument writing could you bring it to life 
by including a scene as evidence. Thanks so much for watching. Please make sure that you subscribe so that you don't miss any mini moves for writers.